So what's the deal with NATO now? I mean, the Cold War is over. <laughs> Communism failed. The USSR as a threat to Europe? Hell, the USSR dissolved, they're gone. So since NATO's main mission, its raison d'etre, its reason for existence is gone, did NATO itself then become obsolete and shrink away into nothingness? Oh, <laughs> not, not, not at NATO all, my friends. Defunct, far from it. NATO has actually grown significantly since the demise of the Soviet Union. What? What's the how, where, and why of NATO expansion since 1991? Why are we picking that magic date? Okay, well, that's when the Soviet Union collapsed. But before we even get to that, remember, NATO was formed up to counter Soviet expansionism, to lock down Western Europe and its allies so the Soviets couldn't penetrate, couldn't roll over and take over all of Europe. When NATO was formed, the Soviets... Uh, got all bent out of shape about it, and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. what's this, us? What is this? Uh, and they formed their own little defensive pact organization named the Warsaw Pact. <laughs> what, what the hell is a Warsaw Pact? What is Warsaw Pact? I tell you about Warsaw Pact. You have your little NATO group warning glorious USSR not to attack your members. But we are not the real threat to you. You are the threat to us. So we form our own defensive group to counter the real threat in the world that is from you, you Western capitalist Yankee imperialist dogs. In 1955, glorious USSR and eight of our wonderful allied countries in Eastern Bloc Europe form military alliance to counter threat of NATO invasion of our Soviet homeland. Our Treaty of Friendship, Cooperation, and Military Assistance assures that we all help each other to fight you whenever your NATO countries try to take over Bulgaria or Czechoslovakia or Poland. There will be no more Poland for you. We will make sure of that. You mess with Poland and you will feel the wrath of collective communist crushing from all member states. Warsaw Pact is glorious anti-NATO gathering. That is what Warsaw Pact is. But of course, some of these places in the Warsaw Pact under the Soviet influence were never entirely happy about being there. Many people chafed under Soviet rule. And many of these countries were basically complete puppet states. Places like Poland, uh, Czechoslovakia, and later the Czech Republic, part of that. Uh, Hungary. I pick on those places in particular because lots of folks were dissatisfied about being under the Soviet umbrella. Many of them did not want to be occupied by the Soviets or controlled or have communist systems. And those are places where there were lots of uprisings and street protests that had to be forcibly put down by the military. So very unhappy peoples in some of these Eastern Bloc countries that were under Soviet influence and basically forced in their puppet status to be part of the Warsaw Pact. Now, all of this comes, of course, to a crashing end in that magic number year, 1991. That's when the Soviet Union uh, dissolved. Communism failed. The Western world won. Yay! And in its failure in 1991 is when the USSR officially voted itself out of existence. And this one huge entity became 15 new sovereign states. Uh, Russia actually was one of those sovereign states. So that was 14 other new states that were created with the dissolution of the Soviet Empire. And of course, at the same time, all of those puppet states like Poland, uh, Czechoslovakia, Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary, they were all now kind of free and for the first time since the end of Cold uh, the World War II that they actually were true sovereign states with independent governments that could do their own things and make their own decisions. In that scenario, many of those Eastern European countries said, we're free <laughs> and let us into NATO, let us into NATO, get us into NATO, we would like to be in NATO. What three countries do you think in particular 
had lots of people saying, let us into NATO now, 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 now. Give us the fast-tracked application. We want to go now. And we're the first three countries admitted into NATO in the early or mid-1990s. If you guessed Poland, the Czech Republic, and Hungary, give yourself an Eastern Bloc cookie. That's exactly right. Those three troubled states, puppet states during the Cold War, who were always chafing under Soviet rule. Now, why did those three states want in so quickly? Take a wild stab. Put yourself in their context. In the early 90s, right when all this happened, very chaotic, yay, the Soviet Union crumbled, but it's very uncertain. Would they rise again? Would Russia simply rise to become a very big regional power and perhaps, once they got back on their feet, reassume control over Eastern Europe? Maybe even reinvade some Eastern European countries? That was the great fear. And so Poland, Czech Republic, uh, and Hungary said, let us in, let us in, let us in. Because if we get into NATO, if we get into NATO, we assure ourselves that the Soviets, uh, uh the Russians now can never mess with us again. Ha <laughs> ha, that's right. So when Poland, now that it's a NATO member, gets pissed off with Russia, or maybe if Russia uh, got very powerful and wanted to reabsorb Poland, Poland can say, hey, Russia, hey, yeah, we're not as big as you, we don't have that big of an army, guess what? Kiss our ass, we're a NATO member, bitches! You cannot mess with us, and we all know that. <laughs> and it wasn't just those three. They were the first ones that got pulled into NATO at the uh, end of the Soviet era empire. However, most other Eastern European countries went the same path. They wanted to become westernized. They wanted to jump into NATO to ensure no further Russian influence. Again, nobody knew that Russia uh, you know, was going to suck for 10 years and, and thought maybe they'd get rich and powerful again. So once you're in NATO, they have assured themselves basically of independence. I mean, you can say that they wanted to be in to be part of a bigger entity, whatever. But by joining NATO, these Eastern Bloc countries have assured not just no further Russian influence, but their own sovereign state status. Nobody can mess with them. They're in NATO now, man. Awesome. This bigger trend that I want you to know is that since 1991, since the USSR went away, there has been a significant and solid movement, a creep of NATO eastward. Eastward expansion that's gone on now for almost two decades. And it may or may not be over yet. Now, what was Russia's response to all this NATO expansionism? Tension, hatred, anger, insecurity, and that's still kind of there. There were really kind of two issues surrounding all this. The expansion itself to Russian borders, but also something called the missile defense system. Uh, uh, both of these things, by the way, have been successfully stymied in the modern era uh, by those rejuvenated Ruskies. That's right. I'll come back to that in a little bit. Uh, we'll take these one at a time. The expansionism itself. What was the result of NATO absorbing more members eastward and continuing to get closer and closer to Russia's borders? Well, for now, all the obvious reasons. Eastern European countries were incorporated at a furious pace while Russia was weak. Remember, in 1991, Russia completely sucked ass. It sucked ass because the Soviet Union sucked ass. It was economically broke and politically corrupt and bankrupt and everything just failed. So while these 15 new nations popped up, Russia being the biggest one, they were very weak. They couldn't do anything about the NATO expansion at the time. They complained bitterly when all of these countries started to join NATO, but they couldn't do anything about it. So when Poland, Czech Republic, and Hungary joined in, the Ruskies were like, whoa, 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 what the hell is going on? You guys started this NATO thing to counter Soviet influence and communist influence. Hey, guess what, friends? There is no more Soviet Union. There is no more communism. So why on God's green earth is your organization still growing and getting closer to our borders? Look at it from their perspective. They protested bitterly about NATO expansion because they said, the reason you exist is gone. The reason it used to be us, but we're, that's gone. We're not doing that anymore. And it increasingly looks to us Ruskies 
that you're getting your NATO troops and your NATO members and your NATO tanks and your NATO missiles closer and closer and closer to us. That makes us upset. It looks like you're trying to encircle and surround us for an imminent attack in the future. Now that may sound preposterous to NATO people and NATO countries and normal citizens in NATO countries like us. Like, we're not going to attack you. But they, the Ruskies don't know that. They lost the Cold War. Their empire was dissolved. They used to control all of that Eastern Europe land that was a buffer between them and the NATO countries. And now they don't. So they've lost big and they've lost their security blanket, their security buffer zone between themselves and those NATO countries that used to have a bunch of missiles pointed at them. I empathize with their worry, all right? So back in 1991, in the early 90s and right on into the 2000s, Russia itself was still weak. It protested, it whined, it complained, but they could not do much about it. By the way, the Ruskies really got pissed when you had the three Baltic states join NATO, and that is Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. Now, why would Ruskies particularly get miffed about those three? Dig this. Uh, those three countries have a direct border with Russia. They're the first three that they abut. They're adjacent. They're right beside Russia. And therefore, uh, and they're actually close to Moscow, and therefore NATO, because Estonia is a NATO member, NATO could put NATO missiles in Estonia. And the Estonians always chafed under the Russians and they hated the Russians. So the Russians are thinking, are the Estonians pointing missiles at us? Uh, 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 you know, a few hundred miles away from Moscow, our capital. So they've been extremely pissed about that. And on top of that, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, the Baltic states actually used to be part of the USSR. They weren't even puppet countries. They weren't independent sovereign states. They were SSRs in the USSR as was Georgia and the Ukraine, other very interesting countries that we'll come back to in a little bit. So the expansionism seemed extremely threatening to the Russians. It still kind of does, even in the modern era, but they're starting to soften and get over it a little bit because Russia is back, bitches. <laughs> they are now strong. From the year 2000 to 2010, they've gotten bigger and stronger and built back up again. And now they can successfully stop this expansionism movement. And they are increasingly talking about, hey, if you try to get these other countries into NATO now in 2010, countries like Georgia, countries like Ukraine. Now Russia can play very significant and serious cards to stop it. Namely, Russia openly said, if you guys keep talking about Ukraine joining NATO, we're going to repoint missiles at Ukraine. We're just telling you that right now. On top of that, the Russians said, oh, okay, we'll repoint missiles at you. And we also supply over half of Ukraine's energy needs, like oil and natural gas. And guess what? We're going to stop doing that anytime you piss us off. And they have actually played that card several times. And Ukraine has to consider that and be like, oh shit, we're going to be out of energy and they're pointing missiles at us. So Russia is back and in a powerful position to stop any further expansion of NATO. It's an entirely different ball game now. And the other one I should add, Georgia, another possible NATO member. It's been invited at various points. There's been talks about including both Ukraine and Georgia. Georgia, of course, got its ass invaded. And one of the reasons that the Russians invaded Georgia was to basically say, stop with the NATO expansion crap. Look, we got our army down there. And if you want to continue to face off, we'll invade full on. So the Georgia invasion by Russia was, again, another calling card that Russia's back and they're not going to sit still for continued NATO expansionism into what they consider their backyard. All right, bring it to number two then. The other big concern of Russia for this whole NATO expansion period was this thing called the missile defense shield. <laughs> oh, what the hell is that? Well, the theory is that you have a, a, a series of radar stations and uh, missiles, okay? And the radar stations uh, are all over the place and they detect any incoming missile from an exterior country. And this was a NATO plan, okay? 
and they're going to set this grid up to be able to intercept any uh, incoming missile. And then we have the missiles here that we shoot at the incoming missile and our missile hits their missile. Sounds very sexual. It's not. And therefore we save the day by intercepting missiles. It's a plan that the U.S. has pushed and worked on for decades. It actually does not work. It never really has. Tr billions have been spent on it. And the, lots of countries are getting pissed off about it, namely Russia. Uh, and the United States and NATO said it, it, during this period of expansion, oh, we're going to put a missile defense system in. Where? In Eastern Europe. And the Ruskies are like, ah, what is this? This is bullshit, all right? This Cold War is over. Why are you surrounding us Ruskies with a missile defense shield? We're not your enemy anymore. We keep telling you that. And NATO and the U.S. says, no, 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 no. It's not about you. It's not about you. Don't worry, Russia. It's not about you. It's about Iran. We're worried about Iran pointing a missile at a European NATO country. That's why we're building this interception, this missile interception system. Don't worry about Russia. Russia has not bought it. They have chafed about this whole thing. They've been pissed about it for the last two decades. All talks about it. Every time the U.S. or NATO talks about it, uh, Vladimir Putin and now uh, Medvedev of Russia have said, uh, and yet, we do not want this. We're going to fight against it. Uh, you know, you're pissing us off. We're not going to help you guys in NATO missions elsewhere. We're going to make your life hard. Stop with the missile defense stuff because the proposed missile defense system was actually supposed to go into, what a coincidence, Poland and the Czech Republic. How do I keep bringing those countries back into this? Yeah, 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 there's something to it. So even that now has been kind of dropped. It was a big hope of the U.S. and NATO, and they're still talking about it, but because relations are warming again between the U.S. and Russia, the U.S. actually dropped it. They said, you know what? Forget about it. We're broke anyway, so let's not talk about that anymore because we'd rather have Russia on our side right now to help us with other world problems than continue to piss them off about this missile defense shield, which we all kind of admit really doesn't work anyway. I, <laughs> sorry if I'm talking in circles here, but you will see a lot of news which still refers to the missile defense shield, and if you do any research, you'll see that this was the main bone of contention between Russia and the West, between Russia and the United States for the last 20 years. As NATO expanded and talked about this missile defense shield, the Russians are like, what the hell? WTF, why are you keeping creeping closer to our borders and building a defense system for yourselves, which looks like it's going to be set up to neutralize a Russian attack if we ever come down to war? And again, empathize from their perspective. All these countries, which used to be under their control, now possibly have missiles pointed at them from NATO missiles pointed at Russia. And they were setting up a missile defense shield, which would have countered any potential counterattack from Russia. So Russia saw this as a double, edge, uh, a double whammy of, you're, it looks to us like you're setting yourselves up to attack us. Again, I don't think so. Most NATO countries don't think so. But the Russians thought so, and that's all that's important. So it was a major, major point of friction. Uh, in U.S.-Russian relations, it kind of has been dropped, okay? And you know what? Let's finish this section up here because this really brings us to the changing relations between not just the U.S. and Russia, but Russia and NATO and NATO's changing status into the future.